Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at a distro that I have been dying to get back into using, Foresight Linux. Just a few days ago, the developers of Foresight put out a news release saying that version 2.5 Alpha 1 was available. This is after being gone for about a year and four months from doing any sort of real releases, so it's very nice to see them putting out a release now. Now one thing you'll notice when you first look at Foresight Linux, it is very, very minimal. It looks just like a default GNOME install. That's because it was originally designed to be the default GNOME install for a GNOME Live CD. So when we look through the applications list, you'll notice that most of these categories only have the bare minimal GNOME installed applications, though some do have some extras. For example, we've got GNOME Do in the accessories list. We've got the standard GNOME games under the games list. Under graphics though, we have the Dia, Dia, whatever you call it, diagram editor. We've got FSpot, GIMP, and image viewer, the normal GNOME image viewer, Inkscape, as well as the OpenOffice Draw application. Under internet though, we have the standard suite of applications, including Skype, which is a little weird to see out of the box, but it is very nice that they pre-include that. Under the office, you've got the standard full OpenOffice suite. Under sound and video though, they've replaced the default rhythm box player that a lot of distros use with Banshee. They've also included by default the cheese webcam booth and the disc burning software. You have a standard suite of utilities under system tools and the standard universal access tools. So basically, like I said, it is a standard GNOME installation with just a couple of extra additional tools. When we look under the system menu, we see we've got administration and preferences, very minimal things under administration, a few extra things under the preferences, such as all the compass config settings, the Emerald themes manager, but basically other than that, it is again, very minimal out of the box. Now, a couple of key differences between Foresight and a lot of other distros, you'll see here in the system menu, we have a Foresight user guide. I have to say, this is one of the most wonderful things in my experience to have. Now, as we look through this guide, you'll see we have different tutorials in it for things such as burning an image, how to install the distribution, how to enable 3D effects, how to work with GNOME panel, installing binary drivers for your video card and for wireless, doing different mail clients, browsers, proprietary codecs. There are so many tutorials just included in here in the default user guide that it is wonderful to see. You've also got info on how to get help for the distro or how you can get involved to help out. I have to say it would be wonderful to see more distros doing this sort of thing. I've long wondered why Ubuntu hasn't created a very similar app to that, but anyway moving right along. If we want to we can take a look at the default backgrounds. It does come with a normal selection of the GNOME default backgrounds. If we look at the pre-installed themes though, there are quite a few additional ones that come with it, such as the Dark Looks theme. You've got several different ones like Dark Room, Dark Nimbus. Foresight of course is the default. It is this plain green one that just looks like a default. We've also got the Ubuntu Human theme that they used to use, and the Nimbus theme, which is a Solaris theme. But the one big thing that does set Foresight apart from other distros, the one thing that makes it really unique, is the Connery Package Management System. This is a custom created package management system that allows Foresight to be a rolling release distro and yet still manage all of the history of everything you've ever installed. So when you type Connery into the terminal, you'll see you get a list of available commands. You've got the ability to update software, which means install software or update the existing software if you have a newer version available. You've got the ability to list the rollbacks that you have available. When I type in rblist, it goes off the screen for all of the different installations it's done after one simple update. However, you can do something as simple as saying sudo Connery rb1 and it will roll back the last transaction you've done. So if you did a whole slew of updates and it broke your system, sudo connery rb1 will take you back that one transaction, hopefully fix whatever went wrong, and then you can move along with your life. Now like I said, Foresight is still in the alpha phase, it is still very young in its development process, and definitely lacking on developers. If you're interested in helping out with it, they do have an IRC channel on freenode.net. They have a forum on their website. It looks like they've got a brand new designed website. And like I mentioned before, I have done a little bit of work for Foresight. I did some packaging of software. That's the other thing that really makes it unique is just how simple it is to package existing software. You can take pre-existing Debian or RPM packages and throw them into Foresight with a very small amount of work into your own personal archive, kind of like you do with Ubuntu but with a minimal amount of coding. 
But that's about all for now. I could go on and on about Foresight for days. It is very interesting to see it up and running again. I hope to see 2.5 come to a beta, hopefully in the very near future. To be honest, I'd kind of like to get back into the packaging process, maybe do some tutorials on it, maybe do a little bit of marketing for them. But that's all I've got to say about it for now. If you're interested in trying out Foresight, remember this is an alpha version. I will have a link to where you can download it in the source code below. But that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.